Hello and welcome to Overdrive. This is Rohit Paradkar and we are at a hot and sticky MMRT in Chennai. Always a great time coming here. In fact, I remember the first time I came here, I was here with the version 1 R15, a proper learner bike for the track. Years have passed, generations have passed and now we have the R15 V4. And joining it is the RC200. Of course, we've known the RC200 for a long time, but this is now back in a new avatar with revised ergonomics, changes to a chassis as well, and so is the R15. New suspension, new design, a quick shifter on some of the models, some of the variants. Essentially, two great bikes if you want to start learning how to ride on the track. So which one would it be if you had to choose between these two? Let's take a look. As always, design is a personal preference. But there's no denying that both these motorcycles have polarizing designs. While the first three iterations of the R15 followed design cues of the R1 or the R6, the fourth installment seen here is modeled after the rather controversial design of the YZF R7. It places the headlight in the center of the nose and while that design seems to work well for street nakeds like the MTs and the FZs, and even the Pulsar 250 for that matter, it does look like a bit of an afterthought on a fully fed machine like this. I still prefer the V3's design and I would also swap the halogen blinkers for sleeker LED units. But save for this sore thumb, the rest of the design carries forward all the niceties of the V3 in the layered fairing, the floating tail panels and the chunky tank. The R1S gills on the tank and the track bike inspired yokes any with the racy touches of the sporty design. The overall design, despite being so familiar, still manages to turn heads and has an air of sophistication to it. But no one does sophisticated styling like KTM. Sure, none of the RCs have ever been pretty motorcycles, in my books at least. Especially if you compare them to the quintessential styling of a super sport track bike. But they have always rated function higher than form. And I like that honesty towards the intent. Now coming to the design aspects of this 2022 RC200. Well, as you can see, it's got an all new face. This is the second generation RC200 that we're getting in India. And it has undergone a substantial amount of changes. So starting from the front, you get this whole new, more aerodynamic fascia. And not only does it look very sporty, well, it certainly suits the purpose out on track. It gives you a lot uh, more buffeting from the wind down on the States. Yes, so the wheels are all new, they are much lighter. The fairing is all new once again. The tank is a little more narrow than it was before. It allows you to tuck in a little better. Uh, the seating as well, that has changed. The pillion rider has a better padded seat. And the split telescope frame is new as well. And the display has been lifted off the 250 KTM Adventure. So that is a decently, a very good looking unit as well. So overall, it has undergone a fair bit of change and out on track, it really seems on point. It really suits the purpose. And there's more than just the aesthetic. It's more about functionality on this motorcycle as well. But my vote goes for the R15 because the design just clicks for me and the quality of the parts and the overall fit and finish is noticeably better than KTM. You could think differently though. And if you're buying the RC purely for the way it looks, I would urge you to choose the 200 over the 125. I'm all for going step by step rather than jumping on the power bandwagon, but the RC200 doesn't feel overwhelming, even if this were your first motorcycle. Sure, it does demand quite a bit of premium over the 1 to 5, but you'll be happy for long as you learn the ropes and extract every bit of performance from this rev-happy 25 PS motor. The engine has better refinement than before and comes with a redesigned air intake to ensure that the vibrations are lesser and the engine feels more composed even at lower revs. The throttle response is crisp, but the performance is still peaky and you'll have to keep the single cylinder engine on the boil to get that rewarding experience. Master this setup and you will be fully prepared to upgrade to the new expectedly 490cc twin cylinder KTMs that are likely to start arriving by 2024. A 
believe that it will be a far more lucrative upgrade than getting the RC125 and then upgrading to one of the KTM 390s. The R15 with its displacement and power output lies somewhere in between the RC125 and the 200 in terms of outright performance. But it's a great balance nonetheless. KTM's aim with the new RC200 was to make sure that the engine reduces the number of vibrations, it feels smoother, it feels more tractable than before. And they've achieved all of that quite well. The R15 on the other hand, despite its engine size, despite what the numbers might suggest, it had always been a hoot to ride on the track and out in the city, it was always very tractable, almost like a commuter, great on the fuel efficiency as well, covering all those aspects quite well. And in terms of refinement, a typical Japanese motor, despite being single cylinder, it was always quite refined. And now with the version 4, it's actually even better. Of course, the engine is not all new, it's derived from the version 3. It does also feel a bit low on power, it does feel a, a little bit uh, slower out of corners compared to the version 3 R15. But this is a very nice motor, a very refined motor, and if that is what you need, the R15 should be your pick. The power delivery feels more linear, and seldom do you find yourself in the wrong gear. Both motorcycles are mated to superb gearboxes, but the r 15s shifts are smoother than KTM's notchy lower gears. While the slipper clutch works like a charm when you start pushing the motorcycle harder on the track. An added advantage of the r 15 is the possibility to specify a factory-fitted quick shifter, and you will be amazed at how functional, predictable and useful it is on the track as well as for city and highway commutes. The refined motor of the R15 is also exceptionally efficient, almost challenging the 125 commuters on fuel economy. You know what the beauty of the R15 has been through all of its generations? It looks like it's derived from its bigger track machines, but it's always felt very agile, it's felt very small in a good way, it's always felt very manageable. And now the version 4 just takes it to a new level. Those upside down forks make a lot of difference to the way this motorcycle handles not just on fast and flowing corners like the ones that you have on MMRT, but also the tight corners that you will typically find on the Kari. It just feels very manageable, it just feels very sharp, it feels very agile, it's quick to turn in even on the sharper corners and that is what makes it such a forgiving tool. And this is what helps you learn, get faster. The r 15 trump card though is the Delta Box frame, which makes it a razor sharp tool around the track and imparts layer upon layer of confidence for the first timer without the need of any fancy electronics. Though it does have traction control for added peace of mind. So all the changes that KTM have carried out to this RC200, well, while on the road you might not be able to really tell what these changes are out here on track, well, they are all there to be felt. Not only does the front face and the new fairing complement the looks of this motorcycle, well, it has a functionality, certain functionality to it as well. The new windscreen, well, you can, it really allows you to tuck in and take on the straights a little better. Now, this new tank, well, on this second generation model, it's a lot more narrower than it was on the previous one. And this allows you to tuck into the bike better, get a better feel and grip with your knees and you can attack corners all the more harder and that's something that's really good and that is also aided by the new subframe it all comes together really well with this bike yeah, in terms of suspension when well, the front holds up awesomely well and the rear of course it can be adjusted and you will want to stiffen it up from the stock setting it's a it's very soft in stock setting and we have tightened it a bit so it doesn't really bounce alone all that much so out on track well you have to get it tuned a bit but once it's there you'll really have a real hoot riding it here. In fact, the RC200 feels plush compared to the Arvin 5 E4, without compromising on the sharp handling that the tiny RCs are famous for. The RC is also a bit too eager and a bit too sharp to turn in, but it's fun. But the only fly in the ointment is the tyres, which ironically don't feel as confident as the Yamaha's lower spec rubber. The R15's Ripier tyres also contribute to a more confident braking feel on the R15. Again, despite having inferior hardware in the actually mounted calipers and the smaller disc brakes. The RC's brakes feel grabby in comparison and have a lesser liver play, making the learning curve for the track slightly steeper. But in terms of sheer numbers, they pose better braking figures. 
Now, when it comes to the RC 200's ergonomics, well, this is a super sport. And at a place like this, out here on track, well, is just simply in its element. So, with the new clip-on handlebars that you get, the clip-on handlebars uh, now in its stock setting, uh, they are at its highest setting. So, it won't have you in an overly committed riding position. If you wanted to get into a more committed riding position, a sportier riding position, uh, lean forward and everything, you would want to lower that a bit. And there's a lot of functionality to the front end as well, like uh, the new windscreen. Well, it helps you tuck in a lot better. Uh, the ergonomics, yes, the seat. So the seat gives you enough space to move around. It just falls into place so well out here on track, uh, the new changes that they've made. So it's a very comfortable motorcycle once again, and it won't be overly committed, but it doesn't mean that you cannot attack corners with ferocity. And that's what I really like about this motorcycle. The R15's rider seat is more comfortable though, and its lower seat height, 815 millimeters versus the 824 on the RC, makes it fit a wider range of bikers. But out of the two motorcycles, the RC200 has the more relaxed ergonomics, it has better pillion comfort too, and the presence of grab handles adds a sense of security for your companion, making it my pick for sport touring. On the track, the RC200 was the quicker motorcycle, and here's a quick look at the lap times. If you are looking to pick up the ropes of sport riding or track riding, the RC200 is the one to buy. KTMs have been a pricey bunch lately, but compared to the R15 V4's ridiculously tall price tag, the RC200 offers more power and performance for the buck. But it also demands a bit more commitment from the rider and foregoes some of the everyday comforts. The R15 feels like a better balance in comparison and is a far more forgiving motorcycle. Features like USD forks and traction control could seem unnecessary on a 150cc motorcycle, but do justify the asking price for those who see value in it. Add to it the better build quality, inexpensive spares and service, and wider color and equipment options, and you have a motorcycle that ticks all the right boxes for the ideal beginner's super sport. If I was 18, the R15M would be the one I would insist on. I hope you agree with our verdict. Picking the right bike out of these is not going to be an easy affair, especially after you ride them back to back. But you wouldn't go wrong picking either of these because all these motorcycles are really good companions for the track. They'll teach you a lot of things and things only get better from here as you upgrade to bigger and bigger motorcycles to go faster and faster. So I hope you have agreed with our verdict. I hope you have taken your pick already. Do let us know in the comments what would be your pick and why. Thank you so much for watching. Oh, mm -hmm.